Good evening. No, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Morris, Mrs. Acquisto, Ms. Vinnie Kirk, Mrs. Milner, Ms. Dancy, Mr. Villacazzi, members of the combined management team, members of the trust board, Mrs. Yolisa Pasipanodoy, say that again, my sincere apologies, Pasipanodia, Ms. Kate Patterson, old girls, past management, and staff members, grade 8 to 11 girls, and to all the parents who have linked in virtually, thank you for joining us tonight for another very different looking speech night. Your support and attendance are so appreciated. We are not scheduled for load shedding this evening, but we do have some backup plans in place, and I hope and trust that we will not need to resort to plan B or C. Mr. Mostert, the timing of my speech can begin now. Earlier this year, I was privileged enough to attend an online course run by the Harvard School of Education, a role reimagined for principals. Much of the first day was about leading in the gap. The gap being what was in the past and what is ahead with reference to the changes brought by COVID-19. Ross Copperman sings the most beautiful song called Holding On and Letting Go. The more I listened to the lyrics of this song, the more I wondered not just about leading in the gap, but actually living in the gap. The first verse starts, is anybody out there? Is anybody? Does anyone really know if it's the end of the beginning? The chorus then follows. It's everything you wanted. It's everything you don't. It's one door swinging open and one door swinging closed. Some prayers find an answer. Some prayers never know. We're holding on and letting go. The gap refers to the space in an organization where the shift of change is taken up by a few in letting the past go and looking for the new. Let's liken it to living in the pandemic. The gap is the space where we have all started to let go of what we knew as normal prior to March 2020. Some people are still sitting in this space waiting for the old normal and I guess, as parents, we sometimes find ourselves here as we want to protect our children and guarantee their futures as we knew life to be. The young woman before me may also have found themselves wish, uh, uh, sitting in this, wishing for what they knew and the various rites of passage that a grade 11 and 12 year should have brought. Some of us are sitting in the gap, grieving for what was, but not quite ready to take the step into the new. And some are sitting in the new, striving ahead with bold confidence and an entrepreneurial spirit. The gap, however, becomes the space fraught with conflict. Is asked and answers are few. It is a space of uncertainty and great turmoil. But it is also the space that new opportunities are seen, exciting ways forward are investigated, and people or organizations take the gap to forge a new way of being. Technologically, the world has been forced to move online within our personal lives, business lives, and ways of entertaining. But the shortfall or the loss has been in the relationships. And Dave Morris, you spoke to this a little bit earlier. How we relate to one another and how we interact with one another on a physical and social level is lost. Remember, at the heart of humans, we are social beings. So how do we prepare our young adults for what is to come? There are so many books out there at present preparing us all for the future. The great twelves who sit here before us this evening are preparing to enter the next stage of study and within a few years, a world of work. You've heard or read artificial intelligence is taking over. A job for life doesn't exist anymore. 
and most of us will be freelancers by 2025. That's three years away, three and a bit. But what does that really mean for you, grade 12s? And what can you do today to prepare for tomorrow? I have five suggestions for you. Become indispensable. Seth Godin equates indispensability to being a linchpin. The linchpin is an essential element, a person who holds part of an organization together. And without this linchpin, things fall apart. How do you do that? Scott Adams, a comic creator, suggests that instead of becoming the top 1% in a particular field, aim to become very good, top 25%, at two or more things. But it is also about attitude, as Simon Sinek says. You don't hire for skills. You hire for attitude, skills you can teach. Number two, prioritize self-knowledge and self-awareness. It is important, grade 12s, to pause and consider what it is that you truly value. You will spend great effort and sometimes make great sacrifices as you prepare for your future. But it is vital that you realize and meet your own personal needs and your own values. Not to arrive at a clear understanding of one's own values is a tragic waste. You've missed the whole point of what life is for, says Eleanor Roosevelt. Self-knowledge means being able to understand things like, what is your philosophy on work? What is your philosophy on life? And what makes life worth living for you? What matters to you and what has meaning for you? What are you naturally good at or talented at? What is success for you? And what does a successful person look like? What makes you happy? What makes you feel good? What gives you energy? Alternatively, what drains that energy? What do you need to live financially, physically, and emotionally? What do you honestly and deeply desire? And what do you dream of? Please don't think that it is easy to have all of these answers to the above questions. Many, many people do not achieve this in their lifetime. To know what one really wants, says Maslow, is cons a considerable psychological achievement reached by few. Number three, learn how to learn. Eric Hoffer says, in times of change, learners inherit the earth. While the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Despite what you have thought, learning doesn't stop after school or after varsity. So grade 12s, you need to work on becoming a, lo a lifelong learner. In the book, The Inevitable, technologist Kevin Kelly says learning how to learn is the uber meta skill that sits above any skill. His advice, instead of trying to predict the next best thing, become insanely good at learning how to learn, whatever new technology or skill becomes interesting and relevant at the time. And it doesn't need to be long, drawn-out courses. Presently, a whole new world has opened up online. Creative Life helps you to learn real-life skills to build a business or freelance portfolio and everything that that entails. Udemy is a platform for anyone to teach anything that they know. Khan Academy, you can basically learn anything from. Coursera offers free courses from places like Stanford and even has a course called Learning How to Learn. Learning, unlearning, relearning, and learning how to learn are perhaps the most important skills in adapting to a forever changing world. Yuval Noah Harari, author of Sapiens and Homo Deus, says, most of what people learn in school or college will probably be irrelevant by the time they are 40 or 50. If they want to continue to have a job and understand the world and be relevant to what is happening, people will have to reinvent themselves again and again and faster and faster. Number four. Solve problems by thinking creatively to add value. Be prepared to think differently. 
to work outside the perimeters and the boxes, to find solutions to world problems. How exciting is it for the creative thinkers of the world that space is created where you can shine in completely. A win for the humanities and arts departments. That's geography, Mr. Bishop. <laughs> Number five, be more human. In a world of cancel culture, human beings are being hurt and excluded more than ever before. We have been driven to work towards inclusion, but in so doing, online living has created even more groups which exclude and cancel people without a second thought. You need to foster empathy, show kindness, learn compassion, and it is only when we fully master these that we can fully be human and build a world of complete belonging and inclusion. Work on these five things, grade 12s. You have the opp opportunity to create a world of true belonging. It is in your hands. Parents and guardians, you'll find yourself in that gap too, of what was and what is to come with your children. You'll find yourself in the position of holding on to your young adults as they prepare to leave school. You find yourself in a position of letting go and trusting that all you have done as their primary caregivers will play out in the way it is meant to. Allow your humans to live authentically, as hard as that may be for you. Allow them to follow paths that may not be the traditional path that you knew. Allow them to create the world of their own philosophy and their own identity. Let them find value in their own values and let them live to them. Let them make mistakes, let them stumble, and let them learn to live in a world that perhaps we haven't quite fully moved into yet. My love and best wishes go to the phenomenal group of young women before me. I know that each of you have the very tools to make your own way forward. Grab the opportunities to learn. Lean into them, live in them, love the good times, love the bad times, take up space in the world, in the boardroom, in the office, on the field, on the stage, and make a difference. At this stage, I would like to take the opportunity to make mention of some very important people. Mr. Dave Morris, Mr. Joe Mtemunye, Mr. Gary Danes, Mr. Mark Berry, Mr. Uh, Dr. Dion Wilson. Your guidance and support has been so appreciated over the last few years. I have learned an incredible amount from each of you and have been blessed to have had the opportunity of your wisdom. Thank you for what each of you have done for the school and the change that you have guided and supported, particularly through the pandemic. Mr. Gary Kelly retires at the end of this year from St. Andrews. His time with us has brought great respect on both the netball field and in the mathematics classroom. Mr. Kelly leaves behind a legacy of excellence and he will be sorely missed on so many fronts. Mrs. Adele Morris has decided to retire a year earlier and will be sadly leaving us at the end of this year after 14 years with St. Andrews. She has been instrumental in the French department as well as the many matric dancers she has overseen. Adele, we will miss you, and we wish you and your family all the very best as you enter the new exciting stage of a granny to twins. <laughs> Mrs. Jeanette Lloyd also retires at the end of this year after 12 years as the senior school secretary. Thank you, Jeanette, for all you have done for us. We wish you all the very best in the future. Do come back to visit us, and please, please pick up the phone when either myself or Ravonia phone you for help. Mr. Chris Boshoff retires at the end of this year, as you have heard. I cannot imagine the school without you, Chris. Words of thanks do not do justice for all you have done and meant to the school. To each of us, and to me personally, 
What a journey we have walked together. To each of the teachers, interns, administrative staff, and assistants, thank you for everything that you do. You have continued to give and give, and at times with great personal sacrifice. Thank you. May the time ahead offer a season of building into the new and continue to create and educate future generation of human leaders, both within your own lives, in your homes, and at school. To the combined management team, Ivanka, Bev, Lee, Sipiwe, Samantha, and Sheila, thank you for all that you do, but most importantly, thank you for who you are. Gail, Andrew, and Rhoda, Another fascinating year of being out in the arena covered in dirt, sweat, and hard work. Thank you for being in the arena with me. I have no words to express the gratitude that I feel. Ravonia, you have been a source of calm, wisdom, and laughter. Thank you for that. The last two weeks have been very, well, let's say interesting. On Friday last week, I walked into the office and said, Ravonia. Ravonia looked at me and said, Jill. And we laughed. And we laughed and we weren't too sure why. I suppose you had to be there. But thank you for reminding me to laugh. And thank you for reminding me to breathe. Marvelous Elena and Anzani, you are truly fabulous. Thank you for your leadership. You have remained committed to the end, and you are true servant leaders. Mr. Chris Boshoff, Mr. Manson, Mr. Bishop, Mrs. Pepper, Mrs. Swanepoel, Mrs. Plint, Mrs. Cordry, Reverend Tibete, Mr. Stewartson, and Mrs. Finneekirk, thank you. Thank you for making tonight happen, despite the challenges of load shedding, and the COVID-19 restrictions. This would not have happened without each of you. To my own family, Dave, Simone, and Nicole, you are my superheroes, my rock, and my foundation. So to each of you, and to each of us, I would like to share the first verse and chorus of the song that resonates so deeply with me, and perhaps maybe with some of you. We are all holding on and letting go.